Hey Gundam fans, welcome to another episode of Gundam Explained. For this video, we're continuing our look at 8th MS Team. We're actually on the 6th episode, Battle Line in the Burning Sand. Kind of curious what that means. It almost seems literal because there is a line in the sand due to a battle that occurred and they're in sand that's very hot. I don't know if it's supposed to be literal like that or we can kind of get some metaphor out of that. I don't know. Let's uh, see what happens. And before we get started, if you haven't, please subscribe. Check out the links in the description below. There's a Patreon going on. Uh, we'll have a movie night for some supporters and stuff like that, so it's pretty cool. All right, so, you know, to get started, the last episode I wasn't too crazy about. It was more of a filler episode and it was kind of goofy. Um, but, you know, that's fine. We can move on. This next episode is actually pretty cool. I feel like it does a lot of world building, not just in terms of the, the factions and how they operate, but also of mobile suits and how they operate but integrating character development in a way. Um, makes you feel sorry for Mikkel, really. It seems like he's always uh, messing up in some way, but uh, yeah, let's take a look at it. All right, so Kiki has an informant giving her some information about seeing an object fall from the sky, doing its test stuff, and it's the Opsilus. After the team coming across it a couple episodes ago, um, they're now wanting to investigate this and see if they can find where this testing center, if that's what it is, could be. Um, at this point, even the Xeon knows that the Fetties are on to them, so they are trying to scramble. Uh, but yeah, so Kiki was able to get some information, so yeah, the 8th MS team can roll out and try to see what they can find. All right, so yeah, like I said, poor Mikkel, right? So this focuses more on his character development that we've been introduced to since the first episode. He's writing these letters, um, and he's just kind of like this hopeless romantic that uh, is kind of... He gets crap for this stuff, but it is kind of funny, and it, it it's kind of gotten in the way of the mission. You know, the last episode, um, it was a little different. It was Elidor that heard that, uh, or he got a letter that his song could be put on the radio, so he wanted to go party, and he was, even though Mikkel didn't want to go out there with him and leave his post, Elidor talked him into that, and so he did leave, and he even got it from his commander by the end of the episode, telling him, you cannot just leave your post. And he apologized. He seemed sincere. But um, we can see where his mind is at. He doesn't have a lot of focus. We kind of get into that uh, here a little later. And this is where things will occur in this episode. But based on Mikkel, his uh, his diary, his little letters, the notes that he's writing between him and his girl, Bibi. All right, so pretty cool. We see in this scene that little antenna that's popping up out of the top of the ground Gundam's head. We actually saw that in the previous episode where the ground gun was underwater, and it had that little antenna pop out. Um, just kind of a neat, cool little world-building thing of the mobile suits. Also, you'll notice there's some high contrast. Even though we're seeing, like, the greenery here and the grass and the hills, there's, there's emphasis on them being out in the desert because they're trying to uh, see if they can come across this obsolus again, get more information. And they bring up the fact that they're in this desert heat. Um, but And I think that holds true with how this episode has been drawn and uh, painted, um, colored, uh, where we're seeing that real high contrast. You're almost looking like you're turning up the brightness on your screen. All right. It, you know, it, it's interesting here. I love how, you know, there, there's a situation where Shiro's Gundam has some issues with the left foot. And I kind of like how when they have the camera, not really camera, but the, the scene where you're seeing the feet and it's kind of zoomed in, you can see the extra detail. So that's one cool thing about this episode is the detail that we're seeing about the ground Gundam, and, and there is more. Here's a look at that contrast I was talking about. It's almost like these things are pure white. Look at the blues. Look at how white that is. You can't even tell if something is supposed to be yellow. So, again, it's really building on the idea that they're out in this desert heat. All right, and they're investigating the site here. Um, it looks like a canyon of some kind and even looked like there was a crater, but also that there looks like there's a, like a scorch mark or burn line um, throughout there, and they're trying to figure out what it is. I don't read any radiation. Good. You know, one crazy thing about it is Karen is being lifted down on this wire, and it's really just her foot and her hand holding on to it. You would think they would have her fastened to something so she doesn't fall. Um, that could be me just nitpicking, but, uh, yeah, they kind of make that look a little scary. Okay, so kind of cool view here. We're seeing Mikkel have, <laughs> he's this giant wrench, and he's actually pulling off some giant bolts 
um, off the side of the ground Gundam's foot. Um, I think it's really cool to see this level of detail when it comes to them servicing these units when they're out on the field. Um, kind of again, it fleshes out that the world building of utilizing a mobile suit in battle kind of helps uh, kind of give a real world feeling if that could even be possible. Okay, so check that out. They lift that up. So very cool to see that um, where um, they use the hand to kind of, you know, because I'm thinking to myself, when they need some machinery, if they're not in a hangar bay in order to do, um, I don't know, try to manipulate some of the technology. Well, yeah, they were able to use the hand to kind of lift up, up the top of that shoe boot uh, so then they could do repairs in there. And they're going to even show more. Now, what's also really cool is seeing these wires and cabling come out. I've watched it before. I didn't really pay attention what it was for. It could be for, like, uh, diagnostics or something like that where they're able to plug it in to kind of get a read on certain things. All right, and so between Mikhail and Shura right now, they're actually troubleshooting and we can see the pistons that were blocked by that guard and the machinery, and they're going to yeah get in there even more. And it's just going back to Karen and Sanders. They're actually trying to get some information from seeing this line in the sand. And so you can kind of see within this canyon where the that line went. And, and she was able to determine it was a glass, meaning some sort of beam weapon actually did this. It was able to heat up the rock in the sand and create this glass. Very cool. Mikkel is inside between the pistons of the foot, and he's got what looks like a filter, and he's kind of messing with it. So I just heard him, he called it an M18 filter. There's some world building for you. That's a trivia question. They use an M18 filter in the foot of the Gundam, and he was talking about how it was clogged with sand, which makes sense because of where they are, but I kind of like that establishment of the deterioration that goes on, the maintenance that's required with using these mobile suits. And, and she was checking out what they're seeing, and he, you know, what Sanders and Karen are seeing to... Really determine, you know, this could be some testing ground for this. Uh-oh, and here's Kiki. Let's see what happens. Now, what's going on here is she likes that she's helping Shiro. Shiro appreciates it. But it is time for Shiro to get to work. It's no place for a civilian. He's asking her to please leave. He doesn't want to be responsible if anything happens, but she doesn't want to. She has fallen for him. Uh, he has played hard to get since that kind of um, uh, little mishap that happened earlier where he, you know, saw her uh, taking a bath or a swim in the lake and that first she was mad but he played it off like a gentleman and he doesn't seem to be interested he's not being flirtatious he's not kind of be acting that way he's doing his job and that's what is a cool thing about shiro even all the way through to this episode he is a good commander um and it even even when you're in battles like this or when you're in the in the midst of conflict um you know he's not really letting someone like kiki get to him or not. Okay, so we're going to get to something here, because now Shiro's going in there to take a look, right, while Mikkel kind of in the cockpit's kind of performing some of the functions to help get this going. So there we go. Mikkel's in the cockpit. He's pulling out a letter. Okay, very cool to see. Like, he, you see Mikkel push on a pedal. There's a few pedals there, and he pushed on one, and that's supposed to initiate the movement of the leg. And we see specifically gears inside on one side of the foot, and they start moving. So we're kind of getting an idea of, while it's not fully explained, it's like how these mobile suits work and how uh, the functions function. Um, but he gets his shirt caught into it, okay? Um, and this becomes an issue. So what happened was luckily Kiki was around because Mikkel was so, I don't know, he was uh, daydreaming about the letter with his girlfriend that he wasn't paying attention to Shiro. So Kiki goes up to the cockpit, um, help stop it so nothing happens to Shiro. But I just feel bad for Mikkel because it's like second episode in a row where he is failing at his duties, getting people in trouble, potentially hurt. What we get right here is pretty cool because it's actually showing um, a cool bird's eye view of the ground Gundam being prepared. I kind of like how you're seeing in the joints where you can kind of see the wrinkle of some sort of... Um, mesh that goes over it i think there's a certain name for it you see this in thunderbolt uh, i think the alex gundam also has that but it's just kind of cool again it shows how 8th ms team not only is it ground based to make it realistic but it really adds um a lot of seeing how that functionality works so that's interesting so sanders just ordered mikhail to erase his tracks which is kind of a cool again world building idea here where they're doing this investigation on a, a supposed test site of the Xeon but they have to erase their tracks so the Xeon can't track them back. Kind of cool seeing the ground gun and backpack in action here. 
again, just a great shot here. This is a great example episode to use. We can see kind of the joint uh, look there that I was describing earlier, and we see Shiro. He has some uh, tools kind of hooked up to it, uh, just really showing and showcasing the technology that's used. He's even really reflecting on the fact that he's so obsessed with the letter that he's not focusing on the mission. So pretty cool, kind of, they're using a drone right now for testing. Um, they're trying to use the information they've collected in order to find out a way that they could engage the Opsilus if they have to. Um, again, Mikkel on the certain mission, he gets distracted. Let's see what happens. And, and they're purposely showing the letter in the foreground, even though it's blurred. And what happens is you see it fall, and then he just looks over to it. Again, he's distracted, um, and he causes the drone to just crash. And so he just messes up their training mission. Okay, and then Kiki just shows up again. You know, and it's kind of annoying because she had already asked for her not to tag along because he doesn't want to be responsible for anything to happen. And again, someone that's just not using the training that they are for this specific scenario might get in the way. Karen is overhearing their conversation, and I guess she sees that his shirt is ripped from earlier and uh, uh, says that she can fix it for him. And so over the intercom, you just hear her say, take off your shirt, take off your shirt. And he's like, no, 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 no. And he goes, okay, fine. And it just it sounds odd, sounds awkward, uh, even though she has good intentions, and he has good intentions. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess even Karen sees how Kiki is just not the right time for her to be around. Here's a nice detailed world building look of a, a can of some sort of beverage and then a sandwich of some kind. We see some lettuce, tomato, uh, the paper that it was wrapped in. Again, some good uh, world building. <laughs> and I kind of like this again. So they, there's a little hole in the ground. There's a, a cup that's put there. Um, Sanders puts some sort of sheet or film mesh something over, over it with a rock in the center to kind of weigh it down. That way... Overnight, over time, the moisture that builds up will fall there and fall into the cup, getting them some water. Um, again, some good world building. Uh, again, the fact that we're seeing this high contrast here, we're seeing how bright the artwork is because it's supposed to uh, show really how hot it is and so water is necessary. So again, another this episode is just full, full of world building while integrating the character development. Can't say that enough. But it's interesting that we get this shot, uh, the, the handle of the um, the controls here, and we see the watch uh, Shiro got from Ina. So while Shiro is 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 leading by example, uh, Mikkel does pick up on the fact that he carries his watch around. So it gets annoying again with Kiki, um, again kind of butting in. She runs off with Mikkel's letter, right? And he's upset about it, and she starts reading it, and laughing, and then slows down because in the letter, you know, the the girl of Mikkel, Bibi, is saying that maybe they shouldn't be talking to each other right now because it's a lot to go through knowing that the war is keeping them apart and it's really hard to think about. And he's out in this uh, in this mission that's kind of out in the middle of nowhere where he can't have a letter sent off, and so he's then feeling that that feeling of being scared of not being able to communicate with her, and he could lose her. So it. I mean, uh, you, you got to think when it comes to the human element, a lot of times the idea of love, you know, kind of takes over a lot of your responsibilities or what you're supposed to be able to do. So he has this conflict of, you know, the responsibility of being in war and this love interest he has and the fact that he could lose her. So this is a big character moment. Luckily, I mean, Shira was getting on Kiki again because he even brings it up. He's, she's always buttoned into things. You know, they're, they're on a mission right here. They can't get distractions. Now, pretty interesting turn of events. Sanders is asking Mikkel to pilot his mobile suit. Um, that could kind of help him be distracted and maybe feel a sense of responsibility uh, in a way. So kind of a callback, you know, Sanders is then giving her water when he was just originally talking about how precious it is, and that's why he put together that little uh, water trap uh, to get the water. But I guess he's seeing how she feels because she was just yelled at by Shiro, and she's even questioning why she's feeling the way she is. So so now we're getting back and we're seeing the emotions that are driving Mikkel amidst being part of this battle and the emotions that are driving Kiki. And she's trying to figure out, you know, what that is. And the emotions that are driving Shiro. And he's holding on to that uh, watch and he's even thinking about it. So let's see. This is called Battle Line in the Burning Sand. And I still don't really get what that could mean other than that literal battle line. You know, the, the glass from the beam blast in the sand that's 
burning because it's hot. And as we see with the contrast of the coloring in this, it's supposed to be, you know, a hot area. So I don't know. What do you guys think? So what's interesting here is um, they're calling out that the song that's playing on the radio overhead while everyone is, you know, dwelling in their emotions um, is Elidor's song, um, which, which we haven't seen yet in this episode. And so that's just a, another character building element, uh, a callback again from a previous episode. And it was requested by Elidor himself while he was in the hospital, which we saw from the last episode after his injuries. Um, so very cool little callback there. Kind of bring the team together, even if they are apart and not feeling the best. Oh, here we go. I love that little uh, Zaku head on there. Check out the gun on that. Let's see what it does. But yeah, the Opsilus is has appeared. Uh, they call that out over the radio. So yeah, let's see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, that was cool. We saw that. The kind of prone position shooting the beam rifle. Okay, great shot there. Look at that. We see the Opsilus Zaku head uh, right in front of Mikkel's uh, mobile suit. Okay, this is getting cool. And you hear the music, too. It's very uh, orchestral. It, it really uh, works nicely here. So she's saying, let go, you're going to kill both of us, says Shiro in his mobile suit on the Opsilus that Ana's driving. And he... He recognizes that voice, and by the surprised look on her face, she recognizes him. Okay, well, what an episode. So it ended where, you know, Shiro and the Opsilus, you know, got lost. The uh, 8th MS team, who's left of them, can't find them anywhere. A lot of cool action at the end with great music to go along with it. So I wonder if you guys uh, caught on that, too. Uh, but yeah, I gotta say this was a really good episode. It was really deep in the character development. People were reflecting on actions of others that were based on emotion and, and yeah, reflecting again, looking at how, um, they see uh, th their own emotions at a time like this and what they think about it at a time where they are trying to find the Opsilus or find this monster, this weaponry. Um, and then, yeah, it does show up and th they were prepared, uh, despite, you know, some of the issues between Kiki and and Mikkel and all that, uh, they were able to kind of possibly fend it off, but now she was lost, so it'd be interesting to see what happens in the ne next episode. So anyway, thanks for watching. Please give this a like if you liked it, and subscribe if you haven't. Again, check the links below uh, in the description. I'll be doing a movie night here soon for uh, uh, it's for Patreon, so yeah, check that out, and uh, well, yeah, we'll talk next time.